Welcome to QViews, your number one source of quantum technology news. This week, we have a new quantum computing company that's emerging from stealth, working on neutral atoms. Silicon Quantum Computing, D-Wave, and Quantinium have either released new hardware or they've upgraded their hardware, and announcing the launch of Quantum Women, a new professional organization of women leaders in Australia. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel for all the latest quantum technology news. And remember, the Quantum Insider has a newsletter with even more research and industry news in the quantum technology space. And all the links are in the description below. On the business side of the quantum technology landscape, Plan QC has raised 4.6 million euros to advance their building of a neutral atom quantum computer. Now, I'm not sure if I pronounced that name right. It's Plan QC or Plank C. You know, we gotta make sure that we all stop shoving Qs into every single word because I'm having trouble pronouncing them. This company is founded by a group of scientists from the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics and other great research universities. And it's the first startup to emerge from Munich Quantum Valley. In a neutral atom quantum computer, the information is stored in individual atoms. These atoms are arranged into arrays and can be controlled by laser pulses. This new funding will be used to continue scaling the quantum computer. Next, NKT is selling NKT Photonics to Hamamatsu Photonics for 225 million euros. NKT has been working in the photonic space since 2000 and has become the global leading supplier in high performance fiber lasers and photonic crystal fibers. This divestment marks the final step for NKT to focus on its core business, which is the power cable solutions. With quantum computing continuing to get more investments and reach new milestones in both the hardware and the software side, how are other industries looking at the ways that quantum computing can help disrupt their industries, either positively or negatively? EY's quantum readiness survey this year has shown that 81% of senior executives say that quantum computing is going to play a big role in their industry by 2030. But only 33% of those executives are engaged in strategic planning towards quantum computing, and only a quarter has set up pilot teams or hired specialists to look into this field. It's early days for quantum computing, but there's optimism and the belief that quantum computing will have a moderate to high level of disruption in many industries. On the research side, we're seeing new hardware emerge from quantum computing companies, deployment of quantum networks, and new research and studies into how quantum computing can help with transportation and logistics. A team of researchers with the Illinois Express Quantum Network have successfully deployed a long distance quantum network between two US Department of Energy laboratories using local fiber optics, 50 kilometers apart. This was the first time that quantum encoded photons and classical signals were delivered simultaneously over this great distance. On the hardware side, Silicon Quantum Computing announces its first quantum integrated circuit. This circuit, which operates as an analog quantum processor, was slated to be delivered in 2024, but it's been delivered two years early. The team used the quantum processor to model the quantum states of a small organic polyacetylene molecule. Amazon is continuing to invest in quantum technologies by opening a new center to support quantum networking research. Quantum networks can enable more secure global communications with quantum key distribution and provide powerful cloud quantum servers by connecting individual quantum processors. The overall mission of the center is to support these scientific and engineering challenges in quantum networks and to complement the advanced efforts already underway at AWS Center for Quantum Computing and Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab. D-Wave has delivered the prototype of the next generation quantum annealer, Advantage 2. The Advantage 2 prototype has more than 500 qubits woven together in the new Zephyr topology. It'll feature 7,000 qubits with a new qubit design, enabling 20-way connectivity between qubits and new topology. The early prototype is available in D-Wave's platform Leap today, with the full system being available in 2023 or 2024. Quantinium announced a major upgrade to their system model H1 technology, which includes expanding to 20 fully connected qubits and increasing the number of quantum operations that can be done in parallel. This upgrade increased the number of fully connected qubits from 12 to 20 and increased the number of gate zones from 3 to 5. This means that more operations can be run simultaneously and in parallel. And more Quantinium machines are planned for further upgrades. 
In more science news, a team of researchers have found that quantum computers can be applied to certain complex transportation and logistics problems. In a study published on Archive, the researchers from Q-Control and the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization introduced a framework for assessing which transport optimization problems may be best solved using quantum algorithms. Also, we are seeing new partnerships forming to address the challenges in scaling quantum systems. Riverlane and Rigetti have partnered together to tackle error correction challenges on superconducting quantum computers. Errors accumulate in a quantum system over time because quantum states are very fragile. Syndrome measurement provides information about the error that has happened, but not information from reading the qubit itself, thereby not destroying that quantum state on the readout. This syndrome extraction is a key step in quantum error correction, which is needed for universal, highly scalable quantum systems. The big story today here at QVs, which I'm super excited to announce, is that after many months of preparation, the Quantum Insider is excited to launch Quantum Women. This is a professional network of women working in the quantum space in Australia, and the mission is to support any women in quantum or quantum-related fields to reach their full professional potential. The launch event featured three distinguished quantum leaders. Founder and CEO of Silicon Quantum Computing, Michelle Simmons, Head of School of Physics at University of New South Wales, Professor Susan Coppersmith, and Principal Researcher at Microsoft, Maja Cassidy, who spoke about their experience building a career in quantum tech and science. Visit quantum-women.com and see how you can get involved. Thanks for joining us today over here at QViews, and make sure to come back every two weeks for your next update on quantum technologies. And remember, we have a newsletter at the Quantum Insider, so make sure to check out the links in the description below, and I'll see you next time.